Welcome to Pro Tradecraft's Weatherization Nation, a show about building smart from the start. Last week, we got acquainted with a 75-year-old brick home in Washington, D.C. that Mark IV Builders is adding to. The old addition had some water problems, which began with the slope of the land and was exacerbated by misguided roof flash. There's several things. I mean, when you looked at these two outside corners, nothing but water damage and rot. I mean, the, the OSB plywood was, you could just take it with your hand and just peel off like cardboard. This week, we're going to explore foundation drainage and digging our way out of a hole. Building performance begins when the rain hits the roof. Steep slopes move water down and away quickly. Once the water's on the ground, the ground should also take it away from the house. But this backyard was sloping toward the foundation, so it was always wet inside. The solution is to dig out the ground and slope it away from the house. Mark IV used a swale in the back to direct water away to the side. Another way to beat groundwater is through capillary breaks. Paint-on waterproofing stops water from wicking into the foundation from the footing. Waterproofing is also painted onto the foundation walls and Mark IV goes the extra mile and uses a dimpled sheet on the outside. That allows groundwater to drain directly down into the footing drain without pushing against the foundation. drain pipe drains to daylight, then foundation water problems will be a thing of the past. Ready? Okay. Uh, so the homeowners are going to live through um, the first couple weeks of the construction process. Hopefully the homeowners will live much longer than the first few weeks of construction. I think what Ray means is that they'll live in the house for the first few weeks of construction. And then they'll flee. Um, so what we've done is We've taken some of the spots where the original house came into the addition and we put up some temporary walls. We went with two by four walls so we could get uh, R13 insulation. We put half inch OSB on the outside um, so we could seal it off. And then we put plastic on the inside and we use seal seal on the top and bottom to really, really try to do anything we can uh, help keep down, mitigate any dust um, as the homeowners are living in the house. We had four major penetrations uh, that we had to build temporary walls. One of them was upstairs um, at the second floor looking down onto the new addition or the old addition. Uh, we had a kitchen penetration into the living room. We had a hallway coming into the living room and we had a, a double door, French door between uh, the living room and the existing um, dining room. Um, we taped our plastic to, to the inside of the uh, drywall. Yeah, just try to help um, any dust or air infiltration coming through during the, the demolition process. Ray says they use heavy-duty Gorilla Tape rather than painter's tape because they're looking for longevity, not clean removal. They're not worried about damaging drywall because they'll be repairing and painting that later. Uh, but we don't tape to the floors. That's one thing we don't do. Murphy's Law pretty much states that if you ever tape anything to a floor, you'll have to replace the so floor. So we put some sill sill at the bottom, same sill sill you'd use when you're doing framing. Put that at the bottom and the top. Um, you pressure fit your studs in there and then it creates a nice tight seal. <laughs> So we're just through phase one. We've got the original one-story addition down. Uh, we're gonna come through here and break out some of the foundation uh, later on next week and dig down the crawl space, do some crawl space preparation with uh, some gravel, some plastic, and some R-Max insulation. Uh, looking into the next week after that, we'll come up with uh, the two-story framing on top of the new foundation and uh, start thinking about tying in the, the framing in the roof. 